Well, when I, when I was in my early teens, I saw some guy on a television program that our family used to watch, and he came out of a, a grocery store with, with a package of groceries in each arm. I don't know that I would have ever seen one, uh, you know, a real unicycle before that. I saw that, saw that on the TV and I thought, well, I wonder if I can take a tricycle apart and reconfigure it and make one of those things and learn to ride it. So I was the first one to learn to ride and then, uh, well, by 1967, I had six brothers. So eventually all of my brothers learned how to ride and uh, they still ride today. Unicycling really impacted us growing up um, and became a part of our identity because it's what we did. Um, we unicycled around the neighborhood, we unicycled the school. Uh, not everyone has a dad will make them a unicycle, so... When people find out that I unicycle, usually the first question they ask is, is it hard? And the second question is, you know, how do I learn? Can I try? Um, usually it's, if they're still interested at that point, another question will be, uh, where can I get one? And then it always goes back to my dad. Everyone I knew had a unicycle made by my dad. Well, I don't have a machine shop. Uh, sometimes I wish I did, but typical unicycles that are built uh, at the Schwinn factory or I'm not sure who else makes them. I don't have the technology for that here in my garage. It takes a lot of thought and some ingenuity, but that's, that's how mine are built. I, uh, and I guess they work okay. When I was growing up, when I was 10, 12, 15 years old, um, if he was doing something in the garage, he would want us there with him in the garage. If we were outside, he was outside with us. You know, the, the unicycling is a great example because uh, that's something you do together. It, it involves a lot of time. He's going to be out there uh, alongside the tree, uh, holding one of our hands, helping us learn how to ride. He had five kids, and he always seemed to find time to spend with us, and so he was just a very loving, very hands-on dad. I like to give encouragement to people. Everybody needs an encouraging word, and some people need lots of encouraging words. Now, I'm eager to do that. We, we all need encouragement. And if a person just puts their mind to it and keeps at some of these unusual things, they can do it. It's just a question of determination and, and practice and sticking to it, and a lot of these unusual things can be done. No, he never wanted to make a business out of them. He didn't really make much money off of them either. Um, that's not really his style. Um, since he retired, he's become really active in his church. He uh, volunteers a lot of his time over there, um, fixing anything that breaks. Uh, you know, I'll come over and he'll be fixing a neighbor's lawnmower, or some, some of the neighbor kids will be out there on the swing set. Um, he is a full-time grandpa now. What's next for him is just not slowing down at all. Uh, my second son in, in Stillwater, Oklahoma, Simon has asked me to build a unicycle for his, uh, his three-year-old son. Each unicycle is, is, uh, is labor-intensive. Uh, there's a lot to keep in mind. But I guess it's important to, to keep the person in mind as well who's going to ride it, especially for my kids and grandkids, because that unicycle is being built for that person. I guess that would be... Uh, an accomplishment of mine, I suppose, if, uh, if some of my grandkids learn to ride, you know, knowing that I built the unicycles that they're that they're riding on. <laughs>